Datology Coach Podcast. Podcasting from a new location. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> hey. Hey, girl. Hey. Uh, so uh, we are recording at 8 o'clock at night. And I mm-hmm. and Sarah sent me a text. <laughs> I did. Like the fuck boy that I am. Like the fuck boy that she is. She sent me a text at 730 and said, you up? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> because I am an old lady. But <laughs> listen, I, I have been... I have found out, remember how I've always said, like, by three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm crashing? I think most people are, but yes. Okay. Yeah. So, lots, I told you, everything with my cortisol, it's cord- It's my cortisol. Mm-hmm. It's my cortisol. I know it is. And so, I'm taking measures to try and lower my cortisol levels. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think my cortisol levels have been off the charts for quite some time. Like, we're talking years. Yeah. Um, it's possible it's possible and And how would we know right i mean right like how would we know and the only reason like i said the only reason it's that is that three o'clock like stopping at three o'clock thing that gets me Mm -hmm. like i'm never able to work a full day never and that bothers me that makes me feel lazy and i don't like that but okay now i want to point something out to you that i that i realized Okay. Um, from the, the Sex in the City episode that we talked about in the bonus episode. So if, if you, we do a bi-weekly analysis of Sex in the City, we call it the Rewind Recap. Mm-hmm. And we're going back, starting with season one, and we're analyzing episodes. Mm-hmm. And um, we do this every other week. It's on the Patreon. Um, I think I might start a tier strictly for this series, if like that's all you're looking for. Um, but you know, I think it's, you, it's the $5 tier but right now. Then you get the, you know, you get the, um, you get the two episodes per month. The $7 tier is the two episodes plus a third bonus episode. Now, well, if you do one just for the sex in the city rewind, you have to call it six in the city and make it $6. Well, $6 <laughs> seems like a little, a little high, <laughs> but yeah. it's the pun. It's what Carrie Bradshaw would want, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help but wonder. Would they pay six dollars for this? <laughs> <laughs> Were there any other puns available? Right. So <clears throat> I was re watching that scene with uh, Big and Carrie where Big's like, you know, she told me you cheated. Yeah, I know. She told me she told you that yeah. scene. And where Carrie says, So why did your marriage end? And he said, Because I cheated on her. Now, it it hit me after we did the analysis. Natasha and his first wife both kicked his ass to the curb when he cheated. Carrie finds out he has a history of cheating. What does she do? She sticks around. And that's what, that's what, I think that was a very big sign to big. (laughs) This is. This is what he wanted. This is the type of woman he wanted. Natasha and uh, whatever first wife's name is. Do we remember what the first wife's name was? I don't even know if they told us. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I I mean, they they probably did, and I just don't remember. But the first two wives, no bullshit. Yeah. Like, no, fuck you, I'm leaving. Carrie, nope. She stuck around. Mm-hmm. And she not only she stuck around, but she became the next in the in the pattern, right? Yeah, of him cheating. And I thought that for him, that must have been a really that was a very green flag. Green that was a green <laughs> flag for him, right? Like in addition to all the drama, that the fact that she stuck around because if you find out that someone has a history of cheating, like what do you do? What will well, you do? I think it's I think it's interesting that you're saying history of cheating. Because all Carrie has to go on is one incident. I wouldn't call that a history of cheating. Uh, okay. I would. Yeah, obviously, because you yeah, did. Because I just did. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so I mean, I, I guess, so I think that answers your question. Like, if I found out a guy I had just started to date and that I liked quite a lot cheated on a previous wife. It wouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker for me, but you know what? I, I don't know that I 
would find out because this like this whole thing about Carrie barging into his ex's office and like aggressively trying to befriend her and then like when she's caught doing all this not melting into a puddle of shame (laughs) as would be appropriate right but instead just doubling down and be like tell me everything right i just i just wouldn't do that and i don't know why she thinks it's her right to know it's not okay you know it's not it's not her relationship it's none of her business i'm gonna disagree with you there i think she does ha- i think she does have <laughs> fair enough i think she does have a right to know because she's now in a relationship with him and she needs to know what am i in for i mean let let me be clear about my position here i i think she shouldn't have asked in the first place because they're both adults Mm -hmm. and they're both too old for this shit Mm -hmm. like asking why did your first marriage end is is so akin to like what's your body count right like just who cares it's over it's the past like just it just doesn't matter Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so i just wouldn't ask right but if i did ask i wouldn't i wouldn't want him to lie right like when i'm saying oh it'd be none of my business like if i asked you know i'd want the truth i wouldn't want Mm -hmm. him to lie about it but Mm -hmm. like i just don't think i would ask because i don't think i would assume i have the right to know you know i just never i don't think i i don't think if i found that out i don't think i could be with them i I I just don't she just asks way too early too Mm -hmm. you know what i mean until at some point it's gonna come up naturally and again, like part of what I mean when I'm saying like I I don't think she had the right to ask, is because they've been on what like three dates. Well, no, at that point I think remember you know ten days had passed and she hadn't talked to the girls and so I think they'd been dating probably a good month and a half at that point. That's not long enough. <laughs> no, it's 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 not long enough <laughs> to be it's asking. Not, it's not for long. this information, right? But again, it's Carrie, and of course she's going to want to know. It's just once you have that information, you can't, you can't forget it. And, and that's why I wouldn't ask. <laughs> right. I know. I mean, it, I would want to know. I just think I wouldn't ask. Right. I, I yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. Cause it's so tempting. Cause you want to know, like, did you ever do this? Right. But here's the thing. What's the point in asking? Because you're going to get a one-sided version of events, best case scenario, or you're going to get a lie, <laughs> worst case scenario, right? You're either going to get a one-sided version of events, or you're going to get like, oh, she was crazy, etc. Well, for me, I don't care what the reason is. You did it. Mm-hmm. When you could have just left. Sure. So, right there. Right there. Like, that's enough for me. You did it. I don't care the reason. You did it. Okay. You know, and I was telling people, we were in our Discord a couple last week talking about politics, and I was. was Oh, why? I know. I know. I'm like, (laughs) and it's my Discord. So I'm like, this is, we're not doing this again. And my father refused to to vote for Bill Clinton Mm -hmm. because he cheated on his wife. I'm like, that was my dad. My dad. Well, how what is that I mean, can you imagine what he would, what he, what he'd have to say now? now? What he'd have to say now? <laughs> yeah, was, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but that was like many people are like, well, you shouldn't, you should vote for the issues. No, for my father, that was that tells that you everything. That yeah. tells you everything you need to know about a man, right? Right, that he could, he doesn't honor a, a, a commitment. He's dishonest that told him everything like that's not who i want right like my father took that like, took voting very 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 seriously as should everybody by yeah. the way <laughs> yeah. um and you he should just, do it <laughs> right you should do it um especially this year go blue and um what was i gonna say and he for him that was that was such a, a he just he couldn't yeah. he wouldn't and so that means who okay, so who did so who did he end up voting for then? Was that you No, know, he went independent that year. Oh, okay. All right. I think he in, he he voted independent most years. Hmm. 
Um, with the, ex- I th- no, I think he voted for McCain. I think my dad, I, I don't know. I think my dad was a Republican um, or a Democrat. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was a Democrat up to a certain point. Sure. Um, and so for me, that's always been instilled in me. That there's absolutely, there's there's no going back. That, yeah. that tells you everything you need to know about a man. Well, you know, interestingly enough, I, I would argue in the case of Bill Clinton, it kind of does. <laughs> it, right. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's pretty slimy. He's, he's a piece of shit. Like, yeah. Good, great president, uh, not a good man. <laughs> not a good man, sir. Uh, but in any case, so I, I just, I don't know if I could... Do I think once a cheater, always a cheater? Um, I don't necessarily think once a cheater, always a cheater. But I, I do think once I know you're a cheater, I'm gone. That's okay. right. Like they very well might never cheat again. But you know what? I'm not taking that chance. Okay. It just it just tells me so much about you. All if right. You, so you would stay with someone if you found out they cheated? Well, not, I'm not saying definitely. I'm mm-hmm. saying maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it, but then it would require this whole story of well, what happened. Blah, 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 That's blah, why blah. you don't ask, <laughs> right? It's just it's it's not a yes and no answer. That's why you don't it's, ask. It's a very layered, you yeah. know. It's a very layered like, and there are some cases, and like this Gareth was definitely one of these. I've spoken about Gareth before. Um, that was just a case of entitlement, mm-hmm. pure entitlement, mm-hmm. right? That's all it was. And I think that that's the case for a lot of men. Just just entitlement. They feel entitled to it. You know, I think the the older you get, mm-hmm. right, the, if you're still dating, mm-hmm. or if you re-enter the dating pool after a marriage ends for whatever reason, mm-hmm. right, whether you're divorced or widowed, et cetera, um, just the older you get, the the greater the likelihood is that you're you're going to be running into people who will you know who will like you know if it comes up and they're going to be honest would have to admit that they have cheated before but i just feel like not all cheating is created equal you know what i mean like i, I was do. it like was yeah. it in college because i'm not sure i care about that you know yeah i I will agree with that was it in high school yeah like, was it like early 20s sure. like were you still like right yeah yeah it depends just i mean people change it's it's not great behavior it doesn't it wouldn't you know knowing this doesn't make me more excited about someone Mm -hmm. but i just feel like that's why you know maybe don't ask (laughs) like all you're gonna all you're gonna do is like generate a new source of paranoia right i agree uh all right well carrie bradshaw She's a mess. So. What a mess. <laughs> now, remember, you know, we, we we go over two episodes per week. Mm-hmm. And these are the most like most viewed videos that I have on my YouTube channel. They love them. So <laughs> um go to patreon.com slash datology coach. You'll you can get the series. You'll get uh a, you know a couple of other bonus episodes uh with just the advice and the stories and things like that. But subscribe so that you can you can listen because I I really want to hear people's thoughts on I want to hear, tell me in the comments, would, if you found out someone had a history of cheating, would you, would you date them or would you continue to date them? That's my question. And do you consider one incident? Sub question, (laughs) sub question, question A, 1A, what is, what was your, what was your follow-up? Do you consider one incident a history of? Uh, All right. All right. Okay. Fair. Well, yeah. Do you, do you, do you tell me? This is going to be like one of those TikToks where it's like, who does the dog go to? Mm. <laughs> or uh, am I the asshole? <laughs> am I the asshole for cheating if it was only one time? You're right. Uh, okay. Sarah, you have a letter? I do. You do. Would you like me to read it? I would. Okay, here we go. Thank you. All right. So it says, dear Kristen and Sarah, I've been listening to the podcast for a while now. And I love your content. Thank you. It's really been helping me deal with a breakup that I experienced that I feel I could have avoided if I had just listened to your warnings about long distance relationships. Well, now you know, and that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Live and learn. 
Uh, my ex, who is a 22-year-old male, and I, 21-year-old female, met last summer on a personality website, which matches you based on your Myers-Briggs type. That's interesting. Have you heard what of is- that before? No. She doesn't say what it is, but I, it's interesting. So, hmm. yeah. Um, anywho, when we matched, I had no idea what he looked like because he didn't have any pictures on his profile. But we quickly hit it off through chat and when we finally exchanged pictures the next day i wasn't very attracted to him but he was so attentive and he asked me a lot of questions about my life and i did the same and we found out that we actually have a lot in common uh we both have strict families and uh similar career paths i was in college at the time he was uh, graduating and still living with his parents but we spent a lot of time on the phone and on facetime and we made plans to visit each other in March of this year. However, I broke things off before we ever had the chance to meet because I really didn't like the distance. Also, because it seemed like we kind of ran out of things to talk about and we didn't have as much in common as I thought. It's been three months since the breakup and he has officially blocked me on everything. Mm -hmm. But now I'm missing him so badly and I wish I would have met him at least once before I broke things off. This is uh, the exact moment Chidi decided to jump on my desk. Oh, girl. And block my monitor. Okay. (laughs) All right. A part of me wants to find him again and reach out in person just so I can see what I was missing. And maybe things would be different if we were in person instead. But the reason I'm writing is to ask, how do you get over the idea of someone or of a potential partner? Because I feel like it's so hard. Because bad moments rarely occur, and now I can only think of the good ones. Our only relationship problem was that he was okay being long distance, and I was tormented by it. So would it be a good idea to try to find him in order to clear any what-ifs from my head? Thank you in advance for your input. And then she says, love you, keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, Thank you. How do you get over the idea of someone? I, well, th- this comes down to, I think, romanticizing people, right? Romanticizing what could have been mm-hmm. uh, instead of focusing on the, hey, the long distance tortured me and he didn't seem to give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how do you get over the idea of someone? That's what you focus on. You focus on the instances where he showed you he didn't give a shit how you felt. And uh, it's amazing how quickly... <laughs> Mm. You will you will start weaning yourself off of this romanticized idea of who he is. Right? Because yeah. he just he didn't care. And and I'm just gonna say this. No pictures. That's yeah. That's this a is in two thousand and three, right? my friend. <laughs> right? Like yeah. that and here here we go. You know what I'm gonna say. You know what I'm gonna fucking say. I don't, don't you? I think he had a girlfriend. Oh, oh. No, I didn't see that coming. I think he had a girlfriend. Huh. Maybe. And, and uh, you know, that's Maybe. why he was perfectly okay with the distance. Because mm. you were out there and, it, it, like, listen, anybody at this point who doesn't put pictures on a profile, they're motherfucking shady. Just saying mm. it. Right out. I mean, I think it's interesting that he blocked her on everything because I'm a huge proponent of blocking but not not necessarily in this scenario. Like you guys, you never even met. Mm-hmm. So, like this this would be one time I could say like I could see you being friends with an ex for sure, given some time. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has now eliminated that possibility, perhaps because he has a girlfriend. Uh, here's the thing though, and we're uh, once again, Kristen and I are not on exactly the same page. Mm-hmm. But that's the beauty of the pod, I guess, right? <laughs> you get two perspectives sometimes. Uh, what I'm going to say is, this is a little bit of a sweet spot, actually. This, this like, missing the potential of someone and, like, I mean, I hope you're not pining, right? I hope it's not not that intense, but just, you're romanticizing this person. I think that's a good and necessary thing to do. If, in fact, you mean to continue dating. Because you have to be hopeful 
and you have to you have to romanticize people and the idea of meeting someone that you're going to be like really amped about um in order to to weed through all the nonsense <laughs> so i think this is actually like it, like kind of a good place to be in and i'm mm-hmm. going to suggest that you don't try to contact him but do hang out with your friends make art and you know in three to six months you're probably gonna look back on your art throw 50 percent of it away but you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna come out the other side of it with like some some useful things right mm-hmm. even if you're not an, an artist or an artsy person like i think it's just uh it's just a it's a healthier avenue for for getting these feelings out than attempting to stalk them online right I agree. <laughs> hunt them down carrie bradshaw style tell me everything you know yes uh all um, right. but yeah i think like just uh put some Mona del rey on and lean into it it's all <laughs> until you're done and you'll so, know when you're done when you are ready to start dating again, right? right. And then you'll be in a good headspace because, again, I, I think you have to you have to be a little bit of a romantic to be willing to try dating. When did I? When did Charlotte York become my co-host? <laughs> when did you become Charlotte York? Hmm. I don't know. I couldn't help I but know. wonder what the fuck is up <laughs> with you. oh god well look we're not totally at odds right because i agree she shouldn't she shouldn't try to find him right you know yeah don't waste your time yeah it's it's certainly not a bad idea to to think of like when you think about him specifically think about all the ways that you're incompatible right and the Mm -hmm. fact that like you weren't even that attracted to him but instead like again if you mean to date you know hold on to this being in love with potential because that's all most people are when you first meet them yes well, that's a really good point that's a really good point we're all just potential when you when yeah. we first meet right and that's some people really don't make point. a great first impression but are actually mm-hmm. great people you know what mm-hmm. i mean <laughs> yep like we we just even like on this pod especially we talk an awful lot about throwing the whole man away <laughs> <laughs> which i'm not <laughs> I'm not saying never to do, but I, you know, I want us to be inclusive and knowledgeable about what we say. And I think, you know, sometimes you have to consider just, like I said, people don't always make great first impressions. And so, yeah, if you can try to remain in love with their potential (laughs) until they talk you out of it. Otherwise, dating is just such a slog, man yeah that's and it shouldn't be it should be fun right Right. if that's the that's the reminder i just uh i keep thinking about that ted lasso clip that i see on um instagram uh, or tiktok all the time about where the guy tells the woman you deserve to be with someone that makes you feel like you were struck by lightning Mm, the (laughs) The sazazu you deserve that we all deserve that i think except gareth well sure (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well not all. Uh all right. Are we saying thank you next? Yeah. Follow up if you want. Follow up, please. I'd like to thank hear more. Next. Thank you. Next. Well, here's a letter that I got on Instagram. Okay. And it says, Hi Kristen. First, as many people have probably told you, I love I love all your dating advice. You literally helped me so much in sorting through all the BS of online dating. I follow and listen to you all the time. I have recently decided I want to date women instead of men. I was hoping to find a way to reach out to you for some ideas and or thoughts on this in terms of dating apps or suggested places to meet women. Are there any apps that would be better than any others? Any advice? Hope this reaches you. Thank you. Mm. Well, first of all, thank you for the very kind words for um, our podcast. Thank you. Um, and wise decision uh, that yeah. you decided you want to date yeah. women yeah, um, or focus on women w- over men. And here's the thing is that, you know, we hear so many terrible things about dating apps, but do we hear the same from, from the queer community? 
I don't, we don't hear that. Uh, no. <laughs> but the problem really is straight no. men, right? Yeah. The problem is straight men. But, so yeah. I, I think you're, first of all, you, you have to tune out a lot of the chatter about dating apps mm. um, because you'll be dating women and women understand each other's, that we just have a better understanding of each other. Um, I, I, people are going to laugh at me, but I'm going to say it again. Tinder. I think Tinder is your best shot. I was going to say Tinder too. Yeah. Tinder. I just, I think Tinder is becoming the new OK Cupid. Mm-hmm. It or, the old, like. or the old okay cupid i yeah. think tinder's the way to go it, they've added a lot more categories that you know that you're because it's not as because it's not you know this is pride month and it's not as simple as gay straight lesbian mm-hmm. um you know what i mean it's it's not it's it's just not and they have a lot of different like demisexual and you know, all of that stuff asexual mm-hmm. and i i th- I think that that is very helpful. So I would try Tinder, maybe Bumble. You can try, uh, you know what? I'd say Hinge because fuck Bumble because Bumble screwed us. So I, I no longer will recommend Bumble. Uh, so I would say Tinder and Hinge. I'm trying to think, uh, you know, do we know of any uh, niche apps for queer dating? I, I don't. Hmm. Like, I always Why don't we be- give it a Goog? Let's give it a go. Why don't we pause here? Sure. We can give it a go. So I came across an article called I Tested Her, which is a dating app for um, for queer women. Mm-hmm. And it says, here's my honest review of the inclusive dating app. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going down to it. Founded in 2013, Her Social was created out of frustration towards other dating apps not feeling inclusive inclusive enough for queer and F-L-I-N-T-A communities. Uh, founder Robin Exton felt so strongly about creating a safe and inclusive space for lesbians that she quit her day job, learned to code, and launched the app. Wow. Uh, <laughs> what? Damn. Yeah. Quit j- just casually quit her job, casually learned to code. Right? <laughs> casually launched See what we app. do? See what we can accomplish when we aren't fucking dealing with men? <laughs> Um, there are a decent amount of profile options. In other words, the algorithm goes on for a wh- goes on for a while and doesn't show you the same two queer people over and over again. Um, users can share what they're looking for in their profile. Options such as hookups, monogamous relationships, polyamorous uh, are are options. Let's see, thirty plus social communities. Um, so hers model is pretty standard when compared to other dating apps. I like that I can answer questions that show my personality. Uh, So it sounds like her uh, is something you should consider. And I've always told clients, right? You you go for, go for two mainstream and one niche and you want to be on more than one for sure. So I would say, try, I would say, try Tinder hinge and her. That seems to be what Reddit is saying. That seems to, and, and Reddit, I think people on Reddit are pretty spot on. So those are the dating apps you can try, but also, I would try speed dating. There's mm. all kinds of queer and lesbian speed dating. Oh, um, I I love that idea. Right, I, I love it. I, it's, I bet it, that's much more um, effective with women. I was just gonna say yes. <laughs> you're not you're not as worried. I think definitely try speed dating. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think that's a very much a viable option. And remember, like all of these, like everything. It's a completely different experience, right? When you're trying to date women, because there is so much you don't have to consider, like, will they kill me? Right. Right. Like, so it takes, it takes the burden off a little, uh, quite a bit, I think. And, uh, you know, you know, speaking of that, if you're looking for a, a spicier app to add to your repertoire, there is one called Scissor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, they, and it's they just get there's right like, to the point. There's a Guardian <laughs> article about it. Uh, it's S C I S S R. Is how it's spelled. So send me the link so that I can link to it in the um, okay. show notes. Um, but those those are the uh, speed dating. I think would be great. Yeah, really, really good. Um, I would stay away from like any kind of singles if it's just like an unstructured. Well, I don't like those. Speed dating's mm-hmm. great, but. You know, the one thing I do want to say 
is, you know, I've decided to date women. I don't know how you identify. Um, but I would say, you know, I, I think you should be up front um, with potential matches that if this is your first time dating women, I think you should be up front with potential matches about that. Okay. Um, because, I, you know, a friend of mine who lived in the building, th- that was a question that they asked their their matches. Like, have you ever dated a woman before? Mm-hmm. So that's and were were they using that to rule women out? <laughs> no, they were no, not to rule them out, but to uh, to like, there's going to be a learning curve. You okay. know, there's going to be oh, is this a? Am I going to be used as an experiment? And I will say that this this one person that she had this, you know, that she asked this question with yeah. and had this conversation that she was telling me about. Excuse me, that they were telling me about. They got married. They've been married for like four years. Oh, okay. So, um, it, I, I think it, it's just like, I, I just want to know. Remember how we were talking before a few weeks ago about the woman who said, um, the men were asking her, what are you? And we said, it's mm-hmm. very, we said, it's very different when, if like a black man is asking her that because it, it's, you know, they're, they're, they, they're looking for a commonality. Mm-hmm. Like they're just looking for someone with a, with a shared experience who could understand their experience. Yeah. Right. I, and I think that's, I think that's similar. So I would be upfront about that. Okay. That's, that's the one bit of information that I would really put out there um, and allow somebody to decide, Oh, cause some people don't want to be somebody's like first. Right. Well, and that's, and that's fair. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know that I would lead with it. I, I mean, well, I'm not saying lead with it. Should I am saying it. once you once you start chatting, once you start talking, yeah. yeah, I would I would definitely put it out there by say like, pref. I would say before the first date, but preferably by the end of the first date, for sure. Yeah, you know, so that's that's my bit of advice there. I uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I think uh, uh, yeah, it seems like an awful lot of women have been kind of burned by. Mm-hmm potential matches and then it turns out like oh they're part of a couple and they're just looking for a third right yeah. right you know so that's all because no one likes to be feel like they're being treated like an experiment right right you know and that that is some it's kind of like you know when if you're separated you should tell them up front same thing because people need to know that because that there, there's a big risk there mm-hmm there's a very big risk for somebody who this is their lifestyle. They have been dating, you know, they have been dating women for a long time and it's a very big risk for them to date someone who's never dated a woman. Right. That's why I say it's, you know, it's similar to, you know, if you, if you're separated, you should put it out there because it's a huge risk for somebody. You know what else you should put out there? What? Yourself. Cause it's, it's June. There's going to be all kinds of in-person events. Yeah. Maybe yes. don't. I mean, download some apps, sure, but like, just keep an eye on what's going on where you live and go to things. Right, right. Like anything else, it's just it's just about putting yourself out there. Yeah. And I applaud you. And yeah. follow up. I want to hear. I want to hear yeah. how it goes. I do too. I mean, especially right? about the apps. You know, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> I want to hear is, what your experience is like. It's better. Mm-hmm. I want to hear what your experience is like, and thank you for sending that in. Um. All right. Um, are we saying thank you next? Thank you next. Okay. So uh, hold on to your butts, people, <laughs> uh, because um, you know this one I think is gonna it might, it might rattle some uh, ruffle some feathers. Okay, it ruffled mine. <laughs> it ruffled Sarah's. <laughs> so it's a little, um, it's a little retro. Yeah, it's a little rest- retro. It's from Nelly Sudri. And uh, she's talking about why well-rounded women not are having trouble finding men. Mm. Ladies, the more well-rounded you are, as in the more successful, smart, interesting, and pretty of a woman you are, okay, the full package, the more difficult it's going to be to get a man to commit to you. And this is because men are wired to be providers and protectors. That's how they feel the most in their masculine energy. And they like to feel that way. So while they might admire you, they're going to look at you in the context of where can I provide? Where can I add value to her? And if they see that you've already got this great life going for you and you're offering yourself a lot, 
it might make him feel kind of useless. It might make him feel like he has nothing to offer you that you can't offer yourself. So he might self-sabotage the connection, reject you or pull away and instead go for a woman who is easier to impress or a woman who's a damsel in distress or a woman who he views as a project because that will make him feel ultimately more masculine. Now, what is the solution if you're in this predicament? Well, I don't think the solution is to make yourself smaller and dumb yourself down because studies actually show that that doesn't work. It leads to women resenting men in the long run. I think the solution, even though your dating pool might already be pretty small, is to be patient and to date strategically. And if you don't know how to do that, watch the free video linked in my bio. And remember, you're not looking for an accessory. You're not just looking for any guy to be a boyfriend to you. You're looking for an asset. So date that way, because that's how men date too. Follow for more dating advice and good luck. Ladies, the more well for a man who's an are... asset. <laughs> Six five. Blue eyes. Blue eyes. <laughs> asset. <laughs> Um, so can we talk about this whole men are wired to be providers bullshit? Please? Well, sure. If you want to start there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where would you like to start? I was going to start at predicament and, and ask what predicament? Because what she's describing sounds incredible. You're telling me that men who aren't in my league will leave me alone. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Where's the problem? Right. Right? find it for me because i don't see it yeah oh so i do think she is giving sort of the same advice in terms of date strategically yeah. i don't know what that means well right <laughs> i don't know what you, that have means. To, you have to buy something to find out I right think. right yeah yep 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 yeah here's here's this free from me to you fuck that guy you don't care it doesn't right. matter sounds amazing if, right if he if oh he needs to he needs to be in this masculine energy and he needs to be able to provide for you no that's the that is the root of why we why we're at where we're at we're not playing into that bullshit it's not that we need you to provide for us we don't need you for that right we need you to be a fully formed human being right that's what we need you to do well so the, i yeah i mean another another way of <laughs> of of framing this might be just that like we do need you to provide something <laughs> we need you to add some value to right. our lives right otherwise what is the point of this what's the point what do you right. force her yeah, right <laughs> right so i'm in predicament where this sounds incredible if if she is promising me again that men who can add nothing to my life will simply leave me alone great right <laughs> i will pay for that where do i buy that sign me up where's the master class <laughs> where's the 10 module course yeah for that uh right i mean i just i'm tired of this men like to be providers and if they're you already have everything then they're not going to know what to do i'm tired of it Correct. too because i don't care they need what men to start. like <laughs> what I'm tired of it too because i don't care what men like who cares right who cares exactly. what men like I don't care what makes you feel masculine. Right. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Figure it out. Also, right. I mean, I don't know if this is still a hot take, but I'll say it again. What is masculinity other than pure hot trash? <laughs> it's fucking garbage masculinity. Right. right. So let's stop with like, we, you know, men want to feel more masculine. No, you know what? We don't want men to feel that way. Oh uh, no! Because tr traditional masculinity is hot fucking garbage, right? It's well, I mean, tr truly, what has it done for us? Nothing. Nothing. Get us into wars. Nothing. <laughs> Ruin our economy. Mm -hmm. Um. So right, like I, I don't. This just this really does. I, I wish I had listened all the way to the end before I decided to play this, uh, because it really is just a. It's a mixed. I'm not going to give you the answer. Yeah she's 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 speaking to a very very specific group and it's you know women looking for a husband sure women looking like and that's again that's fine but it just perpetuating this men need to feel like they're providers and if they the woman has everything then they don't know what to, that's not our problem it really is not and i i just can't overstate i simply do not care how men feel right <laughs> I right really don't this kind of advice needs to go mm -hmm. about because like, it's that, centering that, men. right it's centering men we don't do that here 
No, they either like you for you or they don't. And yeah, keep and it moving. E- right, and they're e- they're either confident enough to do the work, confident right. and willing, because we know we know there's a learning curve. We're not expecting you to be perfect. Sure. And that's where, like, you really need to be grateful for that that we, that we know there's a learning curve. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Like, we're, we're being we're we're giving you grace. Yeah. Just say thank you and a shut lot, the fuck I up. Think. Right. Yeah. Just say thank you. Because we don't have to do that. So um, I, I just don't like this advice of like, well, this is what men, how men need to feel. Nobody cares. Nope. Nope. No, nobody here cares, I should nope. say. No. Nope. <laughs> and that's what we need to be telling women. Uh, fuck this girl and fuck those guys. Uh, final thoughts. Well, I don't know about, I don't know about fuck this girl. I, like I said, this was a mixed bag. I mean, because she's. You know, she is promising again that that men who are not on your level will leave you alone. And great, <laughs> right? But she also says things like men date unattractive women because they're less risky. Oh, does she? Does she say How that about elsewhere? You, right? Yeah. How about you don't know what men find or consider like you don't get to decide what men can find attractive, and you also don't get to define what's unattractive. You, I think- mean, I. Yeah, is that so? That's elsewhere on her TikTok that she says that. Yes, and she cites no sources. Um, I I don't believe so. Interesting. I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so that's why I say she's hot garbage. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, Final thoughts, Sarah. Um, I'm looking for a man who's an asset. <laughs> I'm looking for a man. <laughs> Offer who, something. No, that I don't care. <laughs> i'm looking for a man who i don't know literally do offer anything at all <laughs> oh god all right um follow us datology pod and me the Kristen m t-h-e-c-h-r-i-s-t-a-n-m go to datologycoach.com to submit your own dating question and i'm going to start posting some of these on the patreon and some of them on the sub stack i still need to figure out what wh- what do i want to do with the sub stack i've got i've got to figure that out uh if you have any thoughts let me know uh let's see remember patreon six five blue eyes patreon.com slash datology coach this is where you get the bonus episodes. This is where you get the Sex in the City series, the um, recap, rewind, rewind, recap. I always do that. That's where you get all these things. And we can, the tiers go from $3 to $7. We might add a new one just for the Sex in the City series. Um, but that's where you get the bonus stuff. And that's where you get the bonus exclusive, like dating advice letter posts that I write the answers to. Patreon.com slash datology coach. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Yeah. Follow me on TikTok, Datology Coach, and My Character Analysis. Follow me on YouTube, Datology Coach, and My Character Analysis. That's it, I think. Happy Pride, keep hope alive, love wins. There you go. I love that. And we're going to, that's what we're going to close out with that. (laughs) Goodbye, people. Bye. Bye.